This box has been in my family for many generations. What's in it? We're gonna find out. Hang on for the loop. Four, three, two, one. I'm Jamie. Okay, I don't want to spoil the surprise, but seriously, what's in the box? Okay, guess. Okay, uh, pictures, uh, jewelry, uh, tre- Ooh, is it treasure? It is family recipes passed down from my great-grandma. Nice! Yes! So her name was Grandma Pete, and I just love what this box represents. It reminds me of so many family meals that we've had together. Lots of great memories, some tough ones too. It definitely has a piece of my heart. I love that. Thank you. And today, we're gonna get a chance to relive some of these recipes. Oh, I can't wait. But before we do, <laughs> check this out. It is so wonderful to have family. You know, nothing beats a group who genuinely care about each other and make each other feel safe and loved. And there's a word for this. Storge. Storge is the Greek word for describing the love you find in a close-knit family. An example of storge is the tight bond you form with members of your family. When you love family dearly, that, that is storge. It's the opposite of heartless or insulting. It's a love that pulls you through family fights and frustrating moments. No matter what your family looks like, how you love your family matters to God. In your family, God calls you to put love first. As Paul wrote in the book of Romans, don't just pretend to love others, really love them. Hate what is wrong, hold tightly to what is good, love each other with genuine affection, and take delight in honoring each other. When you go beyond pretending to love your family and you enjoy honoring them, you're putting love first and sharing storge. Ricky! Hello. Hey, Ricky, Hello. I want to introduce you to my dad, David. Hi, Hello. Ricky. Uh, this is my mom. Mom, Yay. this is everyone. This is Jamie Hi. and Jamie's dad. Mom, I, I want to ask you this. What were you like when you were in middle school? I was pretty rebellious in middle school. Uh, it's a time in your life where you want to have an image outside of your house. And I tried to play a little bit of a bad girl that really wasn't a bad girl. <laughs> First time I'm hearing any of this and I love it. <laughs> I'm one of those that when I discovered that I could make kids laugh, then I was just, I was insufferable. There were so many things I could do to disrupt a class. What's the silliest thing you remember doing to get people to laugh? We had a funeral for a bug one time. I wish I'd known that question was coming. I could have probably thought of something else, but that's my first, that's my first thought is I can't even think of the bug's name, but. Since we're talking about a a little bit of our past. I have something here. This is my great grandma Pete recipe box. Here, I'll pull out this one. Uh, yeah, you can kind of see where she had taped it and the tape has gotten a little bit yellow. So let's see what we've got here. Uh, chocolate sauce, coconut macaroons, magic fruit cake. Cooking in our family is just something that we hand down. We hand down recipes. I think more important than the recipes is probably the time that was spent around the table, eating these meals, making each other laugh. Food was always involved with grandma. I always made me barbecue chicken. And it was it was awesome because you know it was my favorite meal. My grandmother, she woke up really early in the morning. She like made pancakes and sausage and like a oh, full spread. I had eaten a lot of the pancakes. I was like, oh no, I ate them all and then like a magic trick <laughs> she opens up the oven and has like a whole second wave oh. of food ready i'm just like <laughs> she was happy to feed us and feed us well and she did she just loved cooking for her grandchildren and she loved it was a gift to her that ricky would eat so all of you guys know that I love Chex Mix. My grandma Imogene makes it every year at Christmas, homemade Chex Mix. And so that's where it originated. All right, Ricky Toy, favorite family recipe? Chicken and mac and cheese. I have such a joy making that meal for you and, and your sister and our entire family. It makes me feel good when people enjoy it. I am thankful for the memories of being able to cook for my family. I, I, nothing made me happier, but just having the family home and uh, knowing that they enjoy it. 
So today we are going to be trying some of our own family recipes and sharing them with each other. And we're gonna start with my grandma's mac and cheese. Oh my goodness, I'm so excited. I love mac and cheese, woohoo! All right. Oh, it looks so good. So this is yes. a dish that we had uh, during the holidays. So like Thanksgiving and Christmas, I always associated it with my mom, but I didn't know that this was actually my grandmother's recipe that oh. she passed down and has That's made so and shared cool. with us. Yes. Oh my gosh, it looks amazing. I want to try it. it here. It has like some pepper on it. Oh yeah. I love pepper on. Wow. Did this it take you back? It did. I'm so impressed. Way to go. It's hard to like recreate your great grandma or grandma's recipes. It just never quite tastes the same, but I'm glad that it does. One of my favorite things about this recipe is just how it gets made. It takes so many steps and so many stages and we'll boil the noodles and then we'll add some cheese, but then we bake it. And then like as we bake it, we just show it to my mom like, how is it? She's just like, <laughs> needs more cheese over here. Like mix it around and so, it's always a team effort. It's not always just about the food. It's about the memories that you make while making the food. Now, there was some drama um, in there our was. kitchen, but I'm glad it never looked quite like this. Today, in the kitchen, we are learning how to make the perfect family drama sandwich. Step one, get some weird bread. This bread is your family. You don't get to choose your bread just like you don't get to choose your family. Step two. Spread grape jelly on one slice of bread and spread mustard on the other slice. Schmooze them together while saying, Mom, he won't stay on his side. This will get the drama started. Step three, punch your sandwich for no reason. Step four, add a bed of lettuce topped with ham to your sandwich. Place turkey nearby your sandwich. Enforce a bedtime for ham. Arrange the ham as if to say, it's not fair that turkey gets to stay up later than me. Step five. On top of the ham, add the vegetables you refused to eat last night at dinner. The veggies that got you sent to your room. If your family never eats dinner together, add chili. Step six. Add something stressful to your drama sandwich, like new baby food or the responsibilities of a pet. Step seven, garnish your sandwich with a sore spot. Might we suggest a handful of your siblings' toys you were specifically told not to mess with? Something that will remind the eater of your drama sandwich, we're fighting. Fill your family sandwich with this kind of drama and your life will be filled with indigestion. For a sandwich without all the drama, follow this recipe. Make allowance for each other's faults and forgive anyone who offends you. Remember, the Lord forgave you, so you must forgive others. Above all, clothe yourselves with love, which binds us all together in perfect harmony. No matter what's in the middle of your crazy family sandwich, let love bind it all together in perfect harmony. Okay, so next up, we are trying my great-grandma Pete's mince meat cookies. You, and You said mince meat? Yes, mince meat. So... What is, like ground beef? I'm not entirely sure because I've actually never had the cookies before. Can I, I'm gonna so, look it up, give me a second. Yeah, let's look this up. Okay, let's see. Oh, so mince meat is chopped fruit cooked in beef fat. Oh, okay. Well, I mean, I guess we'll just have to try it. If it's in the recipe box, it has to be good, right? Thank you. Oh, wow. Looks like there's some like nice volume to them. Yes, okay, I guess I'll just choose one. I don't know. Oh, it, it smells, smells like a holiday cookie. It smells really sweet. Yeah. You wanna give it a bite? Okay, yes, give let's it do it. Okay, I'm going to bite here. It's really good. Yeah, it just tastes like a spiced holiday cookie. I like the raisins in it. Mm. Mm. So you said you'd never had this before? No, I haven't. So this is kind of like a fruit cake cookie. They, these are very delicious. And usually raisins and cookies is the first sign of betrayal or trust. But this is really good. Do you mind if I have another cookie? No, not at all. I have another. 
you have to send me the recipe. Okay, I absolutely will. Yay! Thank you. Growing up, my little brother was only a year younger than me, and we loved to compete. But sometimes those competitions turned into us fighting, usually over something silly, and we'd stay mad at each other for days. Neither one of us were willing to say, I'm sorry. In the Bible, there were lots of family fights. You can't find a perfect family. In fact, you'll find many of them are pretty messed up. Some of them were actively trying to murder each other. We're not offered a blueprint for a drama-free family, but the messy families in the Bible and those in our lives tell the story of God's redemption. A family is a great place to learn that we can't do it on our own. We need God's help. When we face family challenges, what are we gonna do? We're going to choose honor. Honor is showing every family member that they have value through understanding, compromise, and serving. Sometimes just being the first one to step up and say, I'm sorry, is how we will show honor. You don't get to choose your siblings or your parents or that one wacky uncle, but you do get to choose honor. If you come from a hard family or one that feels broken, it doesn't have to be your future. Not every family issue will be solved with a smile and better listening. During the tough times, be there for your family and take your worries to God. Jesus loves to restore broken hearts and restoration takes time. I thought we tried everything. I don't know why we still have plates. Yeah, I don't know. We uh, found another oh. recipe in the back of the recipe box. Oh, I recognize this. What is it? This is actually my great grandma Pete's avocado tuna loaf. So, I mean, it's another recipe that maybe doesn't sound super great, but maybe it'll be okay. Like a meatloaf, but with tuna. Yes. It's cold. So it is it cold. It looks like guacamole. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I think it's coming out. I think I hear sloshing. Ah! Yay! Oh, it mostly, okay, so it's not just guacamole on the top, it is green all over. Yeah, go ahead and just slice it. Okay. Slosh me a slice. Oh, it looks like there's some red peppers. Pimento. There we go. Oh, or it could be that, actually. Oh, you know what? It looks like it's almost kind of like a coleslaw. But with tuna. Hey, you know what? You know what I just got a sudden urge to learn about? Spider-Man. Why don't why don't we take a little break to learn? <laughs> All right, I'm just putting this off. I feel like I'm about to jump off a diving board. <laughs> you are like a high one. <laughs> you are about to jump off of a diving board straight into Flavor Town. Here we go. <laughs> oh, hey, <laughs> Hmm. Huh. Wow. I did it. I did it. I just saw it wiggle while I'm eating. I was thinking that the tuna was more chicken. It kind of tasted like chicken noodle soup. And then just guacamole. So I wouldn't make this. It wasn't horrible, Grandma Pete. I think that for a different, more refined palate, I mm, yes. appreciate that. And yeah. I could not. Um, <laughs> People put a lot of love into what they cook, so it's important to make sure to be nice and give it a try. And you might discover that you like it. Yeah. I didn't like green bean casserole for the longest time, and now I love it. Yeah, and I didn't like minced meat before just because it sounds like it's minced meat. I've been thinking about the term tough love. Have you heard it? It's like when someone can be stern because they're trying to help you in the long run. Like when your parents discipline you because you did something wrong, it's not because they're mad, it's because they wanna correct your behavior to help you later on. But thinking about tough love had me thinking about the idea that love can be tough, especially in families. My siblings and I didn't always get along growing up. I was really sensitive, and so it made it easy for me to be the butt of jokes, to be made fun of, and a lot of times I felt forgotten and taken advantage of. Love can be tough, but this is what the Bible says about love. In Romans 12, nine through 10, it says this, don't just pretend to love others, really love them. Hate what is wrong, hold tight to what is good, love each other with genuine affection, and take delight 
and honoring others. Wow. Here's the deal. We're all sinners. Moms, dads, brothers and sisters. We all fall short of God's standard, which is why we need Jesus. And the wonderful thing about God is that we don't love with our own power, but it's God's love moving through us that helps us love our families. See, loving families put love first, and that comes from God. It can be as simple as using encouraging and kind words, helping your sibling with their homework, or doing chores when no one asked you. Sometimes we have to set the example. When we choose love first, it changes everything. It changes how we feel about each other, and it gives other people permission to love us well too. So let's not think of love just as tough as in something that's hard for us to do sometimes, which it is, but also love as tough with endurance and perseverance, because that's the kind of love Jesus demonstrated for us. That was really fun trying all those yes, recipes. I agree. I'm so surprised that the mincemeat cookies turned out as good as they were. I hope that someday we get to have a Lucio potluck where we get to try <gasps> all of everyone's different kinds yes. of meals and dishes. That'd be fun. That is such a good idea. I bet mm. Quiz Man would bring a lot of clam stuff. <laughs> no matter what your family looks like, hold on to what is good. Choose to honor each other. Really love them. We really love our families and we really love the meals that we've shared through the years. And as you go on to make memories with those you love. Don't forget to enjoy, enjoy the ride. ride. Speaking of enjoy. Oh, you just had one of those in your pocket? Never know when you're gonna need a mince meat cookie. <laughs> My hunger calls. Okay, do you know if your parents have subscribed to our channel yet? Absolutely. They <gasps> say I slouch too much. I need to work on my posture. <laughs> do they want you to sit like this? <laughs> they do. They want me to this is what they sit upright. Hello. Yeah, how about you? Hey, Mickey. <laughs> okay, yeah, my parents have totally subscribed. The thing that they comment on most is when you don't follow through with a high five. High five!